Welcome back to Wind Chemistry. In part two, I go over atomic structure. Now if you look carefully below, I'll give away the answers in the subtitles, and I'll number them too, just like in your notes. Now they're not in perfect order, so you'll have to watch carefully. But here we go, let's check it out. One of the first things you have to understand is the number of protons determines the atomic number. So something with three protons has an atomic number of three. Something with four protons, like beryllium, has an atomic number of four. Now, if I reset this thing, and I just throw in like neutrons or electrons, you can see here that the element has no identity. And it really doesn't matter like how many electrons I throw in there, or how many neutrons. Until I get a proton in there, it won't have a name. So now that I have one proton, this thing now becomes hydrogen. Let's expand two of these tabs, net charge and mass number. Let's go through each one of these particles. A proton has a charge of plus one and a mass of one. A neutron, as suggested by its name, is neutral, so it has no charge, but it has a mass of one. So protons and neutrons weigh the same. They each weigh one. So one proton, one neutron has a mass of two. Two protons, one neutron has a mass of three. Two neutrons, two protons has a mass of four. But the problem now is the net charge here is plus two. So we need to balance out the charge. Currently this thing is known as an ion. So an ion is just basically any atom that has a net charge. It can be positive or it can be negative. It makes it an ion. We can offset this problem by throwing in electrons. So electrons have a charge of negative one, but no mass. Once I throw in two electrons, they balance out the two protons in the center, in the nucleus, and now we have a stable neutral atom. Let's build a different atom. I'm going to just quickly throw in three protons. So this is a lithium ion. And now we're going to check this box where it says stable and unstable. So you can see how it's jiggling. And when it's jiggling, this indicates that this ion is unstable. And the reason why it's unstable is because it's naked and it has no neutrons. So one of your problems in the homework will ask, what's the function of neutrons in the nucleus? Why do you need neutrons? Neutrons provide a stabilizing force. So it exerts something called the strong force and it keeps your nucleus under control. Because without the neutrons, if you really think about it, all you have are protons here, which are positively charged. And these guys all repel each other because like charges repel. They don't want to be next to each other. But as soon as you throw in the neutrons, it stabilizes it and it offsets the repulsion that's occurring inside the nucleus. It acts sort of like a glue. Okay, think of neutrons as like glue or like providing like structure or like a backbone to the nucleus. It keeps it nice and stable. Now, you can also have an isotope of lithium because adding another neutron here means it can still be stable, okay? It really just depends on your element, but you don't necessarily need the same number of protons to neutrons for every single isotope, okay? An isotope is just basically an element with like a different flavor. It's got a different number of neutrons. So you can have a lithium six, a lithium with a mass of six, or you can have a lithium with the mass of seven, and these two versions exist in nature. Now we can finish this off. We can finish off our atom, and we can just throw in three more electrons, and now the net charge is zero. We have a neutral atom. What if we add a fifth neutron? This is now unstable. So it's a delicate balancing act okay, between having too few neutrons and having too many neutrons. You need the perfect number or the right amount. Okay, and so the two lithiums that are stable in nature 
are lithium-7 and lithium-6. Alright, I have more information on isotopes. So let's quickly build a carbon isotope. This one has six protons ready, so the net charge is six, and the mass number is six. We're not finished yet with this atom. Let's continue building. Let's also check this box here. So currently this thing is unstable. It just needs more neutrons, like I was explaining before. And it turns out a carbon with a mass of 12, so six protons and six neutrons is stable, but it's still an ion because it has a net charge. Okay, so again, to offset the charge, I need to throw in electrons, and it turns out I will need a total of six electrons. So now everything is perfect. The net charge is zero. The mass number looks good. It's got a mass number of 12. But let's see if there are other isotopes of carbon that exist. This one is also stable. This is a carbon-13, we would call it. So carbon-13 has six protons and seven neutrons. And if I throw on one more neutron, this is carbon-14. And this thing is unstable. And its role in science is to date stuff. So you can actually measure the amount of carbon-14 to carbon-12, and you can actually figure out the age of like old fossils and bones and like structures that uh, were abandoned uh, a long time ago. So this is known as carbon-14, and carbon-14 has six protons and eight neutrons. It's also important to note that the atomic mass unit is one-twelfth the mass of carbon. So because carbon has a mass of 12, and there are six protons and six neutrons, each with a mass of one, that just means the AMU is one twelfth the mass of carbon. And let me build it from the ground up so you can see. We're at a mass of five, six, seven, eight. I'm just alternating protons and neutrons, 10, 11, and 12. So once again, we've built carbon again, six protons, six neutrons, a mass of 12, and AMU is 1 12th the mass of carbon. All right, that concludes part two, which one over atomic structure. I discuss most of the questions in your notes, one through 17. Now it's your turn to go through the build an atom activity. I've included a few questions here and there for you to answer, but I think it really helps if you go through and try this out for yourself. Make sure you include an ID photo and the picture of the work that you'll submit online. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.